What's up freaks? In this video we're gonna talk about crested gecko morphs. The number one question I get is always what morph is my crested gecko? So watch this and find out. The complete guide to crested gecko morphs. A morph is how we describe the different phenotypes of a crested gecko. A phenotype is just a fancy word for the visual characteristics we see on these geckos. Some phenotypes would include the color, pattern, markings, and the independent traits. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into it. One of the most common morphs would have to be the patternless. Think of the patternless as the base morph or an open canvas for all the other morphs and traits to get painted on. A patternless, as the name suggests, has a lack of pattern or very faint pattern across the body. Another variation of the patternless is a bicolor, which is a patternless gecko that has a very faint, different shade of color, usually running down the dorsal. Next we have the tiger morph. A tiger has long streaks of marbling across the body that usually go along the laterals to the dorsal. Another variation to the tiger is the brindle. Brindles don't have the stripes as bold as tigers and they are usually more broken up and busier. Next up we have a flame or fire crested gecko. Flames have one base color and then a different color marking that run from the head down to the dorsal. Sometimes flames will have a small amount of markings on the sides. One of the most important base morphs would have to be the harlequin. A Harley is basically an upgraded flame that has the markings running down the back along with the markings on the laterals and the limbs. Most Harlequins have a dark base, but there are also red Harlequins, yellow Harlequins, and orange Harlequins. Remember, all these morphs can be used in different combinations of colors, patterns, and traits. Some patterns or traits affect each other differently when put together. Keep that in mind. The extreme harlequin, one of my favorites, is an exaggeration of the harlequin markings on a gecko. Typically, for me to consider a gecko an extreme harlequin, it must have side markings that reach up all the way up to the upper laterals and a significant amount of limb pattern. There are some extreme harleys that have so much harlequin pattern that it nearly covers all the base color of a gecko. They might look like tigers to an untrained eye, but you can distinguish them by the base color on their cheeks or their dorsal color. Now that we covered the base morphs, we could talk about the traits. Traits are usually independent, but they can vary depending on the morph or other traits being expressed by a gecko. This will make more sense as we go on. The Dalmatian trait are the spots you usually see on a crested gecko. These spots are black most of the time, but they can come in different colors like red or olive. If the gecko has at least one Dalmatian spot, it carries the trait. Geckos with a heavy amount of spotting are considered super Dalmatians. Technically, a gecko needs at least 100 Dalmatian spots to qualify as a super Dalmatian, but a good rule of thumb is if you have to ask whether or not the gecko is a super Dalmatian, it's not. Dalmatians with large black spots are also considered ink blots. The faded out black spots or green spots are also considered the oil or lichen spots. Lastly, when a Dalmatian has a bunch of spots crammed together, it is considered a cluster. Now, portholes are big white or cream spots along the sides of the gecko. These are not necessarily related to Dalmatian spots though. In my opinion, the pinstripe trait is one of the most, if not the most important trait in crested gecko morphs. Pinstripes are the two raised rows of scales that run from the crest all the way down to the tail base. Usually pinstripe scales are white or cream colored. If there are no breaks on the pinstripes, then the gecko is considered a full pinstripe or 100% pinstripe. If there are pinstripe scales that are missing or significant breaks on the pins, then the gecko is a partial pinstripe. Remember when I said that certain traits can react differently when put together? Well, that seems to be the case with portholes and pinstripe scales. When a pinstripe gecko has portholes, they tend to be stretched out and they create lateral lines. 
Like the pinstripe scales, lateral lines can be broken or full. When a gecko has the pinstripes and full lateral lines on both sides, the gecko is considered a quad stripe or a quad pin. Phantom pinstripes are basically pinstripes that have a solid overall color like a patternless or a tiger. In fact, phantom pins can be also called patternless pinstripes or tiger pinstripes depending on their base. The phantom gene mutes out the flame or Harley markings in the gecko and the pins are the color of the base color of the animal instead of a white or a cream. Okay, so this one can be a little confusing. The reverse pinstriping is not actual pinstriping, but more of an effect that, in my opinion, the tiger or brindle morph have on pinstripe geckos by creating a dark outline running just underneath the pinstripe scales bordering the dorsal and upper laterals. It is typically seen in yellow pinstripes or phantom pinstripes. The fringe is the white, cream, or yellow outline in the hind legs of a crusty. The kneecap trait goes hand in hand with the fringe trait, and it is the white outline on the knees or the inner thighs of the crested gecko's hind legs. The blushing trait is the distinct red or orange hue that a crested gecko can get underneath their throat. A crowned crested gecko is a gecko whose crests significantly stick out past the side of their head. Sometimes crowned crests can flop down on the sides of the gecko's head. Generally, crowned cresteds will have pronounced head spikes, but crowned doesn't directly refer to the length of their spikes. The furry trait is often confused with the pinstripe trait, but they are different. Furry means that the spikes from the crest go down the dorsal, but unlike the pinstripe scales, they do not follow a single line. Instead, they are spread apart a little more and they're kind of disorganized. The soft scale trait was originated by Anthony Caponetto and to me it looks as if it makes the scales a little smaller and flattens them out more than normal. It is very hard to distinguish, especially over some pictures or videos online, but I think there is something to it. The trait is relatively new to the public, but I am interested in watching it develop. I will say that I do own a couple soft scale geckos and you really have to look closely and feel the geckos in order to notice a difference. Anthony claims that this soft scale trait is a co-dominant mutation, meaning that you only need one soft scale to produce soft scales and that there is a super form, which he coined the super soft scales. The white spot trait, sometimes called the snowflake trait, is a trait that is usually seen with high cream or high white crested geckos. This trait is characterized by white spots along the limbs or the laterals of the gecko. This trait is not directly linked with Dalmatian spots. Like the white spot trait, the drippy trait seems to be unlocked by high cream or high white crested geckos. In particular, high white pinstripe crested geckos. Like the name suggests, this mutation gives the impression that the dorsal is dripping down the border of the dorsal. It can also drip up from the side patterns. My second favorite trait has to be the white wall or the white out trait. This mutation adds a thick layer of cream or white to the harlequin markings of a crested gecko. The streaks of thick cream can be called the white out while the more intense filled out cream can be considered a white wall. This seems to be a co-dominant mutation with the super form being the white wall. I will say that similar to the lily white gene, the white out or white wall gene is on top of the actual harlequin markings. The lily white morph is a co-dominant mutation that looks similar to the white out or the white wall or even a high white crested gecko but it has been proven to be different through several different breeding programs including ours. The lily white gene dramatically adds cream and white to the crested gecko and they wax out the pattern a bit. For more info on this morph, feel free to check out one of our previous videos on lily whites. The links are in the description. The azanthic morph is a recessive mutation that eliminates all the yellow pigment in an animal. The Xanthic crested geckos are typically patternless gray animals that can fire up nearly black and fire down to a very light gray. 
As of now, the two main breeders working with Asiantics are Altitude Exotics and Manatee Sound Coast Lizards. One of the most exciting crested gecko morphs out there for sure with tons of potential has to be the Asiantic morph. Just the possibility of wiping out all the yellow pigment in a high cream crested gecko and making an all white crested gecko is the ultimate goal. We shall see how it unfolds. For more information on recessive traits, check out the links in the description. Well, that's going to wrap up this encyclopedia of crested gecko morphs. I hope it didn't drive you so crazy, but if there's any traits or morph that you think I missed, write it down below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps out my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook if you're on those social medias. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.